is Angie. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad you're here. If you've never been here before, welcome. If you have, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a whipping chat. It is Saturday, July 15th. And I'm going to say now that I am really tired, but I was tagged by two friends. And so now I am going to be doing the take questions. I'm also going to take a few minutes just to show you what I've been working on this week. Since last week, uh, last week I started working on this kit. <clears throat> Was it about a week and a half ago? I can check. Um, and then I started working on another kit underneath that you'll see here in a minute. But isn't he cute? He is really cute. It came up really well. That was a super easy kit to work on. So let's take a look at where I am at and what I've been doing. And then we'll go into, um, if I can find my sheets. I've got them in here. Okay, so I started Odie on July 5th. And I finished him on July 9th. Okay, hmm, it's too bad I don't have the same pen. Um, do I have a pen like this? All I have is my Sharpie. You know what, I'm not gonna fill this in, but I did finish this on July the 9th because I kitted up this the next day. This is Venice Alfresco. <clears throat> so this took me five, six, seven, eight, nine, five days. It is called Odie. Guardian of the Gardens by Richard Lorenz from Diamond Art Club. It's a fully licensed kit. It had 50, it has 51 colors. It's still available. And maybe I can try and zoom out a little bit so you can get a better look at the finish. And I believe this is my 10th, my 10th kit of the year. And, and I'm gonna turn it sideways because you can't see it. So. There we go. That's much better. I like to be able to see the whole thing. I don't like it when creators move things around. I like to just see the whole thing in screen. That's just me. That's my preference. But um, yeah, but I will do it this way as well so you can see it this way. I'm not sure. Yeah. So like I said, I'm really tired and I'm suffering from some brain fog today. I, I woke up this morning thinking about a mistake I made on a workbook that I had to hand in to somebody. And it's just been complete chaos. So, yeah, that's where my headspace is at. But isn't this pretty? And I just, you know, I was really surprised that I didn't mind the color blocking in here. To me, this is not a heavy confetti kit. But I know a lot of people might think it is um, or might find that it is for them. And I think that's pretty subjective. What people like to work on is pretty individual and it can change over time. As you'll see when I work through, um, when I work through my questions and who you find out is on my list. Now I did find that this, was t this kit was really tight and it doesn't need to be. It's not as tight as Life is Tigers that I did in March. From Diamond Art Club, but this one is still, I still think it's just a hair too tight. But I think the kits from a year ago, a year and a half ago, in that range when I first started buying them, were not tight enough. So I think it would be super to have something in between, a happy medium. Because I have to push to click these in, and I don't want it to feel like work. When I have to push things in, it feels more like work, even though I'm enjoying it, because I just loved all the colors. I did not run out of any colors on this kit, which is absolutely fantastic. I didn't add any AABs to this kit. It had lots on its own, and it made it faster to work on because I didn't add anything extra. But you can see there's ABs all through here, all through his hat, all the way through into the pretty flowers, and even down onto his 
I guess they're not feet, they're claws, aren't they? <laughs> not onto his feet, which is super cute. And I, yeah, I just really, really enjoyed working on that. So that is finish number 10. I was looking at that because I have, I'm going to be answering these questions for 2023 finishes. I have under my workbook, I have had 10 finishes as of this kit and I will likely have this one underneath. So yeah, that's about the same as last year despite having work. Some of my kits were very large and came across from last year as whips. Notre Dame Knight was huge. It has almost 110,000 drills on it. It came across half done. And also another one was Rainbow Fairies of J-Wall. There was full crystal with 60 colors and that was mass confetti. There's videos I have back in my whipping chats about the degree of confetti. And then there would be 50 colors in one section. That's pretty heavy confetti. <laughs> it took me a long time to do. Anyway, so on with it. <clears throat> so what I have done since then, so I finished this last Sunday. Am I looking at my calendar? So I guess I get mixed up here. I finished this last Sunday and then, that's right, I finished this on Sunday and then I kitted up um, my next kit. I'm going to work on. Okay, so that's super cute. Let me put them over here. I'm going to get into the rest of these questions. And I can diamond paint while I do that. So it'll be sort of a whip and chat, sort of happening for a little while. This light pad is really cranky and I don't know why. Mm -mm -mm. There. Anyway. <clears throat> So I am working on, this is um, Venice Al Fresco by Dominic Davidson from my stash. Um, I kitted it up on July the 9th and the date I put on here is the date I lay drills. So I started laying drills on Monday after work, oops, I believe. That's why that's on there. So I'll just tuck that away. I have just a cheapo diamond painting log from Amazon, which is completely out of date, but I will put these in here so then eventually I'll get it around to finish filling it out. I'm not big on journaling and all those things, but I just thought I should, it would be nice to have a record to look back at to see what I'd finished. But I also find that that 2022 finishes that I did is a great log of what I finished and has really good pictures of the kits as well. And we'll get into why I think that in just a second. Um, okay, so I was tagged. <clears throat> well, should I start yet? Yeah, let's start. So getting into that, I have these two trays from DP Gal Creations. I have a white tray for dark drills and a dark purple tray for light colored drills. I also have these four pens that have kind of been what I've been using lately. These three are from Crafted Makes and this one is from Patriotic Team. And I switch between pens frequently. For this kit, I am using a 9, 5, 7 and 3 placer. Although you'll find I'll pick one up and I'll do like a, almost a whole color unless I start thinking, well, it makes more sense to switch to a five. You'll, you'll see me do that. I very rarely use a single placer at all, but I do have blue dots in my single placers. And in my multi placers, I have multiples. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have Quake Old Putty in my multi placers for multiple placing. So, there's those, and I have kitted this up. Now I'm going to tell you a little story about this kit up. I kitted up in my art dot storage, and before I open this, I'm going to tell you what happened. So I wanted to do something 
a little different. I've been doing a lot of people lately, but I guess I just did a bird. I don't know. I just, I get, even the bird was like a portrait style kit. I decided I wanted to do uh, a kit. Well, <laughs> here we go again, right? My stories. So last year I bought two kits that were based off of memories that I have from a trip that I took with my husband, which was pre-COVID. And it, we went, we did the tour uh, to Rome. It's called the Road to Rome Tour. And we stopped in Venice and we went to, this, this is the kit of Venice. And then I have another one that's Burano e Coli. And it's a Dreamer Designs kit. I can't find the stickers for it. I went to go and find that one to work on. I was going to work on that one first because I haven't done a Dreamer design in ages. So I thought I should, you know, I should do that. And I was also inspired by other people talking about in the last couple of weeks working on their oldest kits in their stash. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. Anyway, so when I went to go and see what I had, I was actually also thinking I might work on a Mandy Manzano, but then I saw this and changed my mind because my stickers, and if I still have a picture of it, I'll throw it up here and you can see the state of my stickers. It was bad, really bad. So my stickers were such a wreck that I didn't even want to set up a video. The stickers were all stuck together. I was miss I'm missing stickers. So I had to like salvage my sticker sheet. You can almost see it. I think there's even like my sticker sheet even got wrinkled. The stickers were coming off because, well, we'll talk about my storage system. Yeah, you can see it's kind of wrinkled. Um, so I, I wrecked this sticker sheet and I've lost the stickers from my other kit. So I don't, I hate making stickers. I oh, hate, okay. I don't want to spend time making stickers. I can make stickers. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Maybe I'll, I'll email Dreamer Designs and ask them to send me a sticker sheet so I can just take it to Staples or something and get it printed. I'm having coffee this morning. It is seven o'clock in the morning. Everyone here is asleep. So yeah, they see this nice, nice sticker. I had to make that. And then this one was ripped altogether. I couldn't get it apart. And there's lots of them that are kind of ugly looking. They have tape on top as well as tape underneath. And that's because they have no sticky left because they were all jammed together. But, you know, all in all, I was only really missing and unable to find this sticker. So that's not too bad when you look at the picture. Hopefully I saw, I was able to put that in for you. So we're all kitted up in our art dot storage. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten by six is 60. This is 120. I've gotten some bottles mixed up from another kit, so they're not laying nice and flat. So hopefully when I start to de-kit some other things, I can, it's actually really annoying because these are taller, but whatever. I'm making myself deal with that, being perfectly imperfect, because I'm supposed to be perfect at work, right? So dealing with the imperfection of that. <laughs> so here it is. I started this Monday. I am, once I'm done this strip, probably tonight I might, depending on what I do today, I will be halfway through this kit. This is the center line right here. Um, started it on Monday, which is, you know, it's a good, bad thing. Yes, it's nice to get a lot done, but it also means... When I get a lot done, guys, it actually means I'm really, 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 really stressed or upset because I'm not just doing it to, for the sake of um, just diamond painting for diamond painting. I'm doing it to relieve my anxiety and try and come down from the stress at work. So... Anyway, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> You're probably going, that's pretty fast. Yeah, it is. And I can be fast. I'm even faster when I don't have a job, but I want my job, right? But that may be beyond my control at this point. 
So this kit is Venice Al Fresco, like I was saying. It is by Dominic Davidson. It is uh, 76 by 51 centimeters. I love the size of this kit. Uh, I guess it's also 20 by 30 inches. Um, for those of you who are doing inches, and it's fully licensed by Diamond Art Club, it has 56 colors, and I think it's discontinued. I, I'm not sure. If it isn't, I'll throw a link to it. So let's get into, um, which symbol do I want to do first? I think I'll do this. Well guys, it is Saturday night. I worked all day. And I went to go and edit my video, and I realized that, uh, yeah, <laughs> the section where I did all the answering of all the diamond painting tag, it didn't record. <clears throat> so I've been working away on my painting after I did work this afternoon, and then I thought dinner, and you can see I'm, I'm down almost to the end of that section where we were this morning. I have worked all the way through it, and I thought, oh, well, I should get um, get editing on that video, so I should pull that out. So I pulled it all out, and here I was, missing the answers to the questions. It's it, it's just my life. I have this, this kind of luck where these things happen. So I am still working on the same kit. It's still the same day. <clears throat> I got most of the work done that I needed to do. And now I'm gonna go right into the questions. And the questions, actually, I, I forgot to say this earlier too, I think, in the part that I did record, but I might have said it later and then I didn't record, so I'm just gonna say it again. So forgive me for that repetition. This, these are the diamond painting tag questions that originated on Mrs. Coffee's channel. If you are wondering where it came from and it's just a list of questions that's being passed around between the network of creators on YouTube and I think it's a super fun idea and it's fun to tag and see who knows each other and things like that and it might lead you to new channels different information and even ideas on how people do things just it's just super fun. I, I just think it's a fantastic idea. I know that something like this was done last year too, but I wasn't on YouTube at the time. So I just had fun listening to everyone's tag questions. So question number one, and there are 25 questions. I'm not quite sure why my screen for my computer is so white and bright. It's actually really annoying. <coughs> must be because I was in a sunny room earlier. So question number one, how many diamond paintings have you completed? Well, I got out my list and I have completed a total of 32 diamond paintings since I started diamond painting. And yeah, that may or may not sound like a lot to you, I completed 2020, for 2022, I completed 22 paintings, and so far this year, I have finished um, 10 paintings, and I hope to finish another 10 paintings, depending on my whips and everything else. Um, yeah, I had three whips coming in from 2022, but they were all really big kits so half of them was left so it's like a uh, medium to small size kit that was remaining to do so yeah I'm counting them in 2023 so that's that question question number two <laughs> how many diamond paintings do you have in your stash well that's a good question I'm not 100% certain. I do have a stash video that I did in March, and if you're interested, go and check that out uh, to see the gory details. But I have added some, and I've completed some out of there as well, so it has changed. 
and I think the combination of what's in there has changed. But as for the size of my stash, my best guess right now is it's at around 75-ish, give or take a few. I haven't updated my Excel workbook in a while. I've just been distracted with life <clears throat> and work and all the things. The next question is, when did you begin diamond painting? I began diamond painting in the winter of 2021. My uh, first kit was an Amazon cheapo kit that I just wanted to see what it was to try it out before I committed to anything um, expensive. And I liked it and I thought, well, I'll try ordering from Dreamer Designs and Diamond Art Club because they seem to have pretty good reviews. So I went ahead and did that. And then the first kit I ever did from a licensed diamond painting company, because I guess that Amazon kit that I never finished that I worked on for like an hour, was technically my first kit, was um, from Diamond Art Club and it was um, Winter Oasis by Chuck Pinson in square. And I believe it's around, what is it, 60 by 80 or something like that. So quite sizable for a beginner. But yeah, I got through it. I learned a lot while I was doing it. So that was that. Oh, number four. Yes. Um, if you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? Well, the rest of my life could be a long time. It could be a short time. Who knows, right? Um, and it's based, this is solely based on the shops that I have completed kits from to date. Now I have more kits that I'm finishing from other diamond painting shops, so those will be coming out in the next while. But for now, in general, if I like had uh, <clears throat> had to pick one, I'm going to pick Diamond Painting Deutschland because. I know I enjoy working on the Max Color kits, and I know they have the perfect balance of um, square drills and sizing on their on their kits. There's no gapping, but it's also not so tight that you have to jam them in. So I think both the drills and the sizing of the squares matters. In fact, the kit I'm working on here is an older kit, so the spacing is actually generous. It's almost too generous, but then I find the new kits are too tight. So I would just like it somewhere in the middle. <laughs> then I would might change my answer. I also think this isn't a fair question because if I were to say Diamond, uh, Diamond Art Club, then I would no longer have access to Josephine Wall kits. So, and I know that Diamond Painting Deutschland also has other artists and that I could fill a box with the maximum number of kits that would fit in it to maximize my freight. And I know the heavy confetti kits would keep me busy for a long time and I would not get bored. So that is also why <clears throat> I would choose that over the others uh, at this time. And that could change, right? That could change. Uh, next question. What's your go, when, when you diamond paint, what do you consume for media? Well, I don't always consume media. Sometimes I just sit in the quiet and I paint in the quiet, to be honest. Um, yeah, when I do listen to things, it's oftentimes the editing of my own videos and it can range from other within chats, from other creators, as well as Netflix. I like Netflix and I like Amazon Prime. I'll put on a movie that I don't have to pay attention to. And yeah, so that's kind of it for me. Next question. Um, what is your favorite category to paint? For example, 
landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. I'm going to say mythical fantasy, if there's such a category. I like... <clears throat> I like um, fairies and dragons and that type of thing. And I'm also actually, when it comes to media, I like, um, oh my goodness, my brain is a fog again. Um, Yeah, I also, I like science fiction too, when I was thinking about what is my media. I like science fiction quite a bit. So space-themed kits, you know, so I like Raven Philan because they're out in space, mythical creature, all of that. Um, for example, I think that's what draws me to the Josephine Wall kits at the moment. I also have, like, a lot of dragon kits from Diamond Art Club in my stash that I want to get working on and every time I look at my stash I think oh I need to work on this one this one and this one but you know I don't want to start all these great big kits when I still have the J wall to finish so yeah that kind of over answers the question doesn't it uh question number seven what is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from well, I had to go and look that up because I have lots of finishes where I have finished two kits from an artist. And so I had to find the one where I might have three. And I actually found that I have finished three Raven Philans in 2022. So Raven Philan from Diamond Art Club would be my, currently my most finished artist. When I finish my whips, I will have finished three Josephine walls. So then I'll have a tie. <laughs> and if I kid up another Raven Philan this year, then it'll be Raven Philan again. So there you go. That's the answer to that. Um, I guess it's the same question. What is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from? Is question number eight. And it is Josephine Wall because I had bought um, two different shipments of filling the box from Diamond Painting Deutschland. But then I also ran into some D stash kits from, from licensed kits from Diamond Art Club when Diamond Art Club used to have um, Josephine Wall. And I didn't know what I know now when I started diamond painting or I could have grabbed them all at the time when I first started but I didn't know what I liked. I thought I liked landscapes <laughs> because that's what I like to paint with watercolor and with um, oil paints is mostly landscapes and flowers and, and I've done some portraiture too but that, yeah that's what I like so I thought that would be the translation into diamond painting would be the same subject matter and it's actually not <laughs> which isn't which is fun because then it's a different creativity right so next question is what is your go-to wax when diamond painting well, I don't use wax I use putty I use quick old museum putty I just buy it off of Amazon it's white it's in the end of my pens here on my multi placers and it works for me. And if you've been here before, you know I've mentioned that I'm scent sensitive. So I have bought putties and waxes from shops, but I have trouble using them because sometimes I find they're too strong for me. So, and, and, the, and the, the Quake Old Putty works, right? I believe I saw that first being used on Diamonds and Washi's channel last year. I don't know, I don't think she's using Quake Hold Putty anymore. I think she's switched over to small shop things. But yeah, that's where I first saw it, I remember. Because I went back to check exactly what she was using and I paused the screen and I looked and I'm like, that's what I want to order. Because it works, right? <clears throat> So yeah, I still have the same package I bought from last year. So it's going quite well for me. 
The next question is number 10. What do you do with your finished diamond paintings? <laughs> That's a mixed question. I think that is a popular question. Everybody wants to know what everybody does with their finished diamond paintings because everybody is, in a general sense, uh, diamond painting more than they can hang up on their walls. So we're, I think everyone's looking for the solution of what to do with these pretty things when we're done with them and how to enjoy them and share them with everyone else. Some I hang up. Some I am storing in gift wrap storage from Amazon that hangs in the closet. It's like a big hanging bag with a zipper around it. And what I do, and actually that's where those, those, uh, that sticker sheet got wrecked before was because I have some kits that are being stored in that. And now that's become my mission to do the kits that are in that storage bag because I don't want to wreck anything else or have anything else go missing on me before I get to finish them. Because what if I can't get the sticker sheet and it's suddenly gone or because it's a discontinued kit? Like I just, I just don't need the straps, right? Anyways, the question, <laughs> the question was how do I store them? Yes, I'm putting them in a gift wrap storage. I have two hangers. One has kits I finished and one has kits that I took out of boxes that I'm storing. I also have cut the sides off here on the ones I want to hang up and I take um, 3M or 5M Velcro command strips and I put them on the back and I hang it straight on the wall. That way it is a, um, a frameless hanging piece of art, which is my preference anyway. I don't, it, it takes up less space and I think it's more modern than having a great big frame and yeah. So I have some hanging up, but more of them are in my closet than hanging up. And the command strips are working great and I haven't had any problems so far. I haven't sealed anything, any diamond paintings or anything like that. Not yet, because I'm lazy, that's why. <laughs> so the ones I have hung up, they're, they're still good. And I hung them up quite a while ago. So it'll be interesting to see how they fare over the summer because I have a couple more I want to hang up especially these memory kits that I'm working on right now from Italy I also have Notre Dame Nights which is my Paris memory kits and I have my blinging up videos in my whip and chats all about that when I was blinging up the Eiffel Tower and all the rest of that kit because there is a lot of a lot of crystals and things in that kit. I went to town on that. So yeah, so there's that. The next question is, do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until they are ready to work on them? Well, that's not really a creative question. I think most creators open them to do unboxings. But I guess there's some of us who don't. Um, before I had a channel, I definitely was opening everything as soon as it walked in the door, which is why, you know, when you watch my stash video, there's a lot of open kits. And yeah, so that's that. I also think it's a good idea to open all your kits because you need to make sure the contents are the right contents. I have had kits that come that are not the right contents. So then I was able to get that corrected and it just happens. It's a fact of life. It's, these things can happen. I've had the right canvases come more than once with the wrong drills from two different places. So yeah, buyer beware, right? I'm sure you know what you have in your stash, especially if your stash is getting bigger. Right? Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, what is your number one unicorn kit that you are looking for? Well, maybe if I had to say, pick something to be a unicorn kit, which I guess a unicorn would be something that is discontinued that you can only get in a stash, a D stash website. 
or it's been on your wish list with a company for some period of time is what I'm going to assume for that. I'm going to say if there had to be one, it would be the Spirit of Winter. And I would like the DAC version of that. I don't want to do the Max Color Kit from Diamond Painting Deutschland for that. And I want to do the DAC version. So if I had a unicorn, it would be that. Um, what is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on? Well, well that goes with my mood. Because I like everything in my stash. So it just depends on what I want to work on at the time, right? I go and I make all these plans and then the plans go by the wayside because my mood changes. I had no plans to work on this Venice kit at all, at all. So, and now here I am. <laughs> this was not part of my plan at all. And I'm halfway through it. So there you go. I, I make a plan, but I don't stick to my plan when it comes to this because it's stress relief. So if I feel like I want to work on something else or there's a reason to change what I'm doing, I'm just going to change it, right? <clears throat> Question number 14. Do you prefer confetti, color blocking, or a mix of both? Confetti. There is no doubt in my mind that it's confetti all the way. Um, the bits, what I consider color blocking in here would be these, these sections around these windows. That's as big as the big as I'd ever want to do color blocking. I groan. I know they go fast, but I groan when I see these. I don't know why. It just is, right? But uh, yeah, that's about as much color blocking as I want to see. So there's that. The next question is number 16. What is your favorite season holiday to diamond paint from? It's kind of an awkward question. Um, I don't really have one. I did a couple Christmas kits last year. Not really into Halloween. It's not as big in Canada as it is in other countries. Um, and kids still go out, but as an adult, not really into it. Um... So I'd say not really into, necessarily into holidays. I love, love, love Christmas, but I don't know how many diamond paintings I want to do that are Christmas related. So, but I do have some in my stash that I will be working on coming up because I will be finishing my stash. So one day <laughs> I have more Christmas kits and I like this is this is goes with being new I didn't know how long it took to do uh, kits so and FOMO kicked in and I bought more than I needed to buy and uh, yeah so just putting a little more putty in my pen here it's not sticking I think it's the heat uh, yeah so I have I have probably got another four Christmas kits at least in my stash right now. And I have a whip that I'm working on for Christmas in July. So yeah, I guess Christmas would be my season that I enjoy the most. Um, yeah. Next question, do you work on one kit at a time or have multiple whips at once? Well, if you know me and you've been here, you know I'm a multiple whip person. I'm a chronic starter and a serial starter. Currently I have six whips. Do I have six whips? You know what? <clears throat> Get out my little spreadsheet here and have a look. I have some water while I'm opening that. I think I'm still getting over that cold I had last weekend because I keep sneezing. I'm still sneezing and I'm still coughing. Um, yeah, I still have 
In my plan box, I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five kits with drills on them. That's pretty good. So at the moment, and I will, yeah. Um, I would like to finish my Josephine wall and get it down to four. And I'm not sure what I'm doing with summer, which is that Alphonse Mucha kit. I might just take that with me on holidays and see if I can finish it off. We'll see. It depends where we're going and what we're doing. We haven't quite decided yet. So next question. Neutral, dark, or colorful pieces. I'm going to go with neutral or colorful. Mostly colorful based on what you're looking at here in the last kit you just saw from me. It's pretty much colorful. I don't like dark pieces. I like things that make me happy because I diamond paint to be happy, to make myself feel good, and the dark art doesn't work for me. I do appreciate, though, I appreciate the art. I just don't want to diamond paint it. What I want to diamond paint is not the same things that I necessarily like in art. So, because I love Impressionism and all of that and Old Masters art. Uh, I've been to <clears throat> Europe and seen lots of uh, original art and I absolutely love it. But I have no desire to diamond paint it. <laughs> but a diamond paint is totally different. So, next. Large or snack sized pieces. Well... I guess we should have defined what, what is large and what is snack size. These are just not sticking in this. This is not working, this putty. I don't know what its problem is. Maybe I need to pull it all out and replace it, but I don't want to do that right now while I'm trying to talk. Um, let's see. Uh, snack size to me would be, I don't know, 30 by 40 or something like that. Um, centimeters that is by the way I'm always talking in centimeters uh, this one I would call medium 56 by 51 that I'm working on this is probably my preferred size um, I didn't used to think that way I used to think that I only liked large kits I had to do the biggest kit with the most colors no I don't know. I like them still and I have lots and lots in my stash that are big, big kits. And I'll put the link for my stash video down below and you can go see what ones they are so I'm not rattling your ear off. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna say the 56 by, or the 56 by 76 like this size or slightly smaller are the ones I like but I appreciate the finishes on the larger kits. And I appreciate doing a smaller kit just, you know, to take on holidays or an in-between. I like to do smaller kits in between bigger kits. That's what I'm also finding. Um, I need the sense of accomplishment. So I, I like that. Next. Question number 20. Do you place diamonds with a tweezers with tweezers or a pen? I tried diamond painting with tweezers and I just found that um, my hands cramped up. I was actually pretty good at it and I got the hang of it when I was doing Winter Oasis, the first kit that I talked about earlier. But my hands cramped from holding the tweezers together. I'm not sure why, but that was the case. So now I'm pens only. <coughs> squares or rounds? Both. And I already talked about squares and how I feel. I like squares a lot. But I also really like rounds. I like flinging up rounds. They're easy and fast to do. Um, next question. What is your favorite method for placing drills? I don't really have a method. I just use whatever pen I have. I just don't use a fresh glue dot or a fresh putty. I will use something that is um, not 
fresh. So if I had to do um, ABs right now, I would just use this three placer because it's almost time to refill it. And I single place with it anyway, so to me that works. And I multi-place my, my ABs. I find sometimes ABs are actually painful because um, they're on the Diamond Art Club ones, they seem to be taking up too much space on the canvas given the new, uh, the newer uh, grid sizing compared to um, when I first started diamond painting a year and a half ago. Like, there just doesn't seem to be room for them. I think that the ABs take up more space. I don't know. I haven't. I just noticed that when I'm placing the ABs, like on the OD kit, that it was really hard to get them in, whether I did them first or did them last on the kit. Didn't matter. That's just my tidbit. I think the ABs themselves are beautiful. I just had trouble putting them in the canvas. Um, next, what is your preferred method method of sectioning off? Well, I don't really section off truly. This is what I do. I use a piece of Amazon uh, release, double-sided release paper. I like the size. I also have the bigger sheets from Diamond Art Club, but they're too big and I end up cutting them. So I just bought this off Amazon. It was super cheap. It works for me. I would try uh, some small shop, pretty uh, release papers but the shipping costs more than the release papers. So it doesn't really make sense to do that. Um, maybe one day someone in Canada will um, do customized designed release papers. Then I would try those. Other than that, I use washi tape around the outside of my canvas when I know a canvas is gonna take me longer or if my hand keeps sticking in it. Um, cause I do have a pet. I have several pets and they have lots of hair as well. And I don't like my hands sticking in the glue. This kit hasn't really needed it so far. Everything's gone pretty well. Um, do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? Currently not really. Um, I'm not a scrapbooker, I'm not a journaler, I'm not any of those things. I have limited time for myself. So right now this is my crafty hobby. Um, and I've been sticking with it for a year and a half and that is really good for me. Um, I do like watercolors, oil paint, pastels, um, acrylics. I had a scholarship from art when I was in high school. So yeah, I do enjoy all of that, but you have to have time for that and you have to have somewhere to leave it out. And I can leave this out and nothing bad happens to it because it's all put away. There's no pet hair getting in it. There's no paint drying out and I can just bling it up however I want. So that is it. I do know how to crochet, but crocheting hurts my back. I'm actually pretty good at crocheting, to be honest. Um, but um, I haven't done that in some time because it hurts my back. Uh, <clears throat> question number 25, and it's the last question, and the most funnest question of all is who do you want to tag in this video? Well, I have a few people that I would like to tag and there were more people that I was going to tag, but they've already been tagged. So I tried to find people that I don't think have been tagged yet, but they might have already been tagged by now because I made this list a couple of days ago. So I'm just gonna, just gonna put it out there. I am going to tag Queen Kimmy on her channel. I am going to tag Diane's Diamond Painting Journey. journey on YouTube. She is a fellow Canadian living over in Europe and Queen Kimmy is doing a mental health awareness um, event in September and I'll be supporting her on that and participating in her event. I will also be tagging the Diamond Stitcher Alyssa over on her YouTube channel and 
Maritza, Kiss My Crafts. If you haven't been tagged yet, although you might have been, I'm tagging you, my darling, to go check it out. And I would also like to hear what Scrappy Sylvia has to say for all these questions. And if I haven't tagged you, it's because I thought you already had been tagged, but you are free to answer all the questions that you want. In the meantime, I'm going to say bye for now. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you very much. And I will talk to you again next weekend. I will be doing a, hopefully doing a mini whip and chat before I go on, hopefully on vacation the week after. And I do have other videos that are in the works, but they're all on hold at the moment because I'm focusing on my job. So today I had to work. I'm hoping not to work tomorrow, but then I have to do household chores, so I can't work on videos again. <laughs> But uh, they're, they're not, the videos aren't going to go bad. They're perfectly fine. I'll get them out to you. Maybe I'll try and edit one so that you have a video for while I'm on vacation. And actually that makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Hey, that's a good idea, you guys, isn't it? So please like and subscribe. I'll see you again. And if you ring the bell after you subscribe, you will get notified of new content. And if you're new here on YouTube and or new to um you know subscribing and all of those things do know that it costs nothing to subscribe but creators like myself and others truly truly appreciate it and the like buttons really help us get up into the algorithm so that more people can view our content and yeah we can make more connections with more people which is my most favorite part so i hope that you have a really good week and you've had a good weekend by the time you hear this and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.